It affects the way you think, it affects the way you feel, it affects the way you love. Those are one man's words on depression. Insider Dr. Andrew Forster tells us how to cope. There really is a stigma on, on mental health, especially in men. A lot of men feel like, oh, I'll just get through it, or right. I don't want to be you know, seen as weak or whatever. So a lot of people, um, there is there is a stigma attached to mental health, unfortunately. Now, do you so. feel, Dr. Forster, that that has improved in the last couple of years with with more people being vocal about it, or are, are we? It is, and and um, thanks to some efforts by some of our our former first ladies, there is some more emphasis on okay, it's okay to talk about those type of things, right. and more recognition that it, it's very prevalent. I think. Most studies show about a third of patients in any primary care practice either have depression or anxiety, so it's right. really a problem. Yeah. Now, depression can be difficult to deal with. It takes courage, bravery to talk about your feelings. So check out this video from the National Institutes of Health that shows real men talking about how depression affects them. Let's take a look. It just simply invades every pore of your skin. It affects the way you think. It affects the way you feel, it affects the way you love, it affects the way you like. It has that incredible, it's just a, a blanket that covers everything, just covers everything. And it's one that's just so damned asphyxiating. And at times you just say, it's enough already, it just feels like enough. Something that used to make you happy makes you cry now for no reason. You don't understand why. You're sitting there looking at something that used to make you laugh and all you want to do is cry then you just decide to not let anything make you feel anything. It's easier to feel nothing than it is to feel pain and hurt or sadness. Many days, I just didn't want to get out of bed. Um, honestly, the only reason I got out of bed on uh, more than a few of those days was because the dog had to get walked and my wife had to go to work. Um, so I walked the dog, take her to work, come back. Some days I get back in bed, some days I just sit on the couch and you know wonder what I was going to do next. When you're in the middle of the depression, all you can think about is the misery and pain that you're suffering and that it will continue forever. And you lose your dreams and you lose your hopes. And that's when I think people then begin to give up and say, that the only thing left for me is to end this pain, and the only way I know how to end this pain is to commit suicide. It's so sad and, and scary because both men and women, they experience depression, but symptoms are different for both men and women. Uh, Dr. Forster, what are some of the warning signs when it comes to men and depression? So, so as we can see here, there, there are a list of different things. Um, one that I that have, people have told me about is withdrawing from family. You know, they notice that their spouse or maybe their brother is acting a little bit different. Um, losing temper easily is one thing, um, and some of the other things we can see here: high risk activities. You know, fast driving, fast boating, that sort of thing. Right, and in, and one of them is engaging in high risk activities. We right. see, uh, you and I were speaking about earlier, need for alcohol or drugs to sort of mask that pain. Right. Yeah, it's a very big problem. Um, actually, in, in young men, um, we saw the list earlier of, of death rates and causes for men, but that's for all men. For young men, suicide is still one of the top uh, causes of death. And how is alcohol use and drug use related to depression? They, they often um, run together. Sometimes um, the depression starts and then people use alcohol or drugs to feel better or they may have a substance abuse problem and after that become depressed. So they right. often, you often find them um, together. And um, how can a doctor help a patient when it comes to experiencing depression or a patient that wants to cut their, their alcohol use? Yeah, so w w the first thing is really to talk to your doctor about it because we, we have ways of helping for both those problems. Right. Um, there are, for substance abuse problems, there are um, programs locally 
that can help with that. And, and we do a, um, a fair amount of intervention ourselves. Mm -hmm. For depression, again, the first thing is talking about it. There are medications, yes. there's, there's therapy, seeing a psychologist to help work through things and, and help people feel better. And how often is medication prescribed and maybe referral to see a therapist? Yeah, so it depends on the patient. Some people don't want to take medications and some just want to see a therapist. Often we do both. Um, and so, and some people don't want to talk to anybody and they just right. want to take medication, so. They think it'll so, pass. Right. right. Yeah. Now, suicide is a major public health concern and it's something we can't take lightly. Check out this video from the CDC that explains what suicide is and how to prevent it. Suicide is death by self-directed violence with an intent to die. It's also preventable. Suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the U.S. This serious public health issue impacts the lives of individuals, families, and communities every day. More than 120 suicides occur in the United States each day. For every one suicide, there are an estimated 30 attempts. Suicide and non-fatal self-directed violence cost the U.S. more than $69 billion every year. People may be at risk for suicide if they have a family history of suicide, previous suicide attempts, social isolation, economic hardship, or a history of mental health problems or alcohol and substance abuse. Warning signs include talking about or threatening suicide or actively looking for means to do so. Sudden changes in behavior or mood, especially following a painful event or loss, can also be warning signs. But the good news, is that suicide is preventable. There are strategies that prevent suicide by reducing risks and increasing protective factors. You can help by strengthening access and delivery of suicide care, creating protective environments, promoting connectedness, teaching coping and problem-solving skills, identifying and supporting people at risk, lessening harms and preventing future risk, and by strengthening economic supports. Working together, we can prevent suicide. And if you need immediate help, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and all calls are confidential. Please, please, please don't hesitate to call in. At the time of crisis, the number is 1-800-273-TALK. 1-800-273-TALK. Now, doctor, even if you're not feeling suicidal, but you're still feeling depressed, help is always available. Help, is that true? Help is, is definitely there. Uh, Baptist has a, a very nice program called Care and Counseling, where okay. we have a social worker who helps arrange um, a visit with a therapist for patients. A lot of times it's, it's hard for patients to arrange it to get mm -hmm. through on the phone and find somebody on the insurance. So right. they have a social worker to help facilitate um, getting that patient seen to get help. For other important topics like this, be sure to visit our website, allhealthtv.com. We have all the advice straight from the experts.